Hey, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us today. And to kick it off, just would love to hear about what you do at Jump Cloud and then how your day to day involves interactive demos. Sure. Um, my name is Nikki, and I am a senior instructional designer on the customer enablement and education team. Um, and for simulations, they're a big part of our content creation, our go to market strategy. Um, we use them for product and feature releases, um, and we use them as a part of our main content for all of our course development. I would love to dive into that a little more because I know right before the call, we were talking about how you used to have simulations that weren't interactive demos. They weren't necessarily owned by your team. How did you make the transition from what we're using in the past for simulations to something a little more no code as interactive demos? Yeah, absolutely. So we, um, as you mentioned, we didn't necessarily own that feature um, and that content creation. So when we moved a new content to Novatic, we really needed something that was quick that we could create simulations with that didn't require um, a heavy lift from the team. So uh, we ended up uh, with Novatic and we had a whole catalog that had to be recreated. We had about, I think it was 33 Sims um, or guided simulations to start with um, that had to be recreated. And so as a team, we all just pitched in. Um, the learning curve was, I mean, it's super easy. So everybody was able to create some from the get go. Um, and we just all dove in and took, um, to, everybody took a section essentially, and we recreated um, our initial catalog, um, which we expand on, uh, I think, weekly now. That's awesome. And for those a little less familiar with Jump Cloud or the different courses or catalogs, are these different features, different ways to use the product? I'd love to dive into more of the setup of that. Sure. So our courses um, are essentially set up into learning paths. So we have our course certification, we have advanced certification um, available. Um, but a lot of our courses contain content, um, video content, our guided sims, um, you know, text or interactive content um, through our LMS. But they're all um, available on our JCU site. And so Nevada made it really easy in order for us to get all of that converted um, and create all new guided sims, but convert some of our old guided sims as well to be able to offer them um, to all of our customers. Yeah, I was playing around the, the demos before this, and it was awesome how quickly you could find it from your website. Like a lot of companies have courses, but they're a little buried. Was that, oh, I know you previously had it. Was that a hard decision to make that so public facing or was your company all on board from the beginning? Um, I think for us, we were on board from the beginning. Um, only because we, some of our guided sims are end user focused. So um, our tutorials will set, are set up similarly where some of it is for admin only and some of it's for um, end user content. So uh, admins wanna be able to share those with all of their users as well. So I think for us, uh, it just made sense to make it public facing um, for our, our guided sim catalog. Um, we do have it structured pretty uh, categorically so they can find, you know, if they're looking for something for devices or users or conditional policies or conditional access, um, admins are able to kind of filter through our catalog relatively quickly to find a specific guided sim and then end users also. So we have an end user section for all of our guided sims that they can share um, with their users. You mentioned like the tutorials versus the simulations. When would you use more of a video content to teach versus the interactive demo simulations? Yeah, so I think um, for us, when we are looking at content or go-to-market features uh, and we want to decide if we should use a tutorial or we should use a guided sim, I think the best um, thought process is to look at it and, and really look at the content and what you're trying to explain to the users. Um, if there is, if it's a complicated process and there needs a lot of explaining or there's some background context that needs to happen, um, then sometimes a tutorial is more appropriate. But a lot of our guided sims are very, very um, topic specific. So they're like mi little micro learning topics um, that we include into our curriculum, um, obviously on our site, but within our courses as well. So a lot of times we'll start looking at it and we'll say, OK, is this a, you know, a quick like five to 10 or 10 to 20 step process? And if it can be rel relatively quickly, like if we can go through the steps and it's pretty straightforward, 
um, then a sim, a guided sim is usually um, the better path there. I love that delineation because that's also our recommendation for about like, if it's like, a, you know, five to 15 steps is a good size for an interactive demo. So that makes sense to split it up. Okay, if I'm doing a task, if it only takes a handful of steps, that might make more sense versus something that needs more explaining. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really what we do. Um, we try not to let our sims get too lengthy. Um, but we do, I mean, a lot of our topics when we create sims, um, we aren't creating like a whole course as a sim. So we use the sims um, as an as an interactive piece within our curriculum and our content. So when we're creating, you know, for example, um, with device groups, like we may want to showcase how to create a um, a dynamic group. So we'll pinpoint on that specific aspect of the platform and we'll create a guided sim just for that. And I think that's really helpful for people because it's it's quick, it's to the point, it's not terribly lengthy. So when they go through when they're going through our curriculum and our courses, um, they may get to do some reading, they may get to do some guided sims, they may get to watch a video or two. So um, it really just gives the learners another way um, to capture. And a lot of times, if people are doing it, they remember it a lot better. It's funny, I was just about to say, kind of giving that choose your own adventure or just like variety. I find when I'm learning too, you can easily just kind of zone out if you're doing the same thing over versus, okay, a quick demo of this feature, got it. Then a video, like I love how you guys vary the different ways that you users could learn. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, I myself am a kinesthetic learner, so I learn by doing. Um, I'm not an auditory learner at all, um, and some people are, and so some people love to just watch the videos, listen to the videos, or, um, you know, listen to a transcription um, of the course content. So it really just depends on, on the learner, but we, we do try to offer multiple ways um, to ingest material and to, um, to learn, you know, the, the features of the product or um, showcasing what, um, you know, our, our updates or our feature updates or whatever our content um, is, uh, is covering. I'm the same way. Maybe that's why I like interactive demos, but I like to dive in. So <laughs> yes. love to hear that you got the different options for the different learners. I do want to take a step back. I know you talked about building like 30 something demos, updating it weekly. It's a lot of demos. Sounded like it was a big team effort, but would love to hear the process of splitting out that work? And then if were there any like features or tips that you use to help speed up that demo process? Sure. Um, so we, um, we split out the work really just based on who was comfortable with what aspect of our product. So um, if I was more comfortable with the user side, I took some user demos. Um, another member of our team is more comfortable with the device side. So he took the device side. Um, and then we have some who, you know, our people on our team who are experts um, at other areas of the platforms, like general settings um, or policies and conditions. So we really just said, okay, who feels comfortable doing what? And we went from there. I will say we tried to make it easy on ourselves. We created a template to start. So everybody, the majority of our sims you'll see have a start and end um, slide, if you will, if you want to call it a, a slide. I think that's what they call it. Um, that are templated out. So nobody has to really think about what does the introduction look like? What does the ending, what's the call to action at the end? Um, we really tried to set it up and we're getting even better. Like the more we create Sims, the better we'll, we're getting at standardization and just making sure that um, the Sims, the walkthrough feels uh, consistent in between all of the Sims uh, on, in our catalog. I love the that. Standardization is a big thing. I will say another tip I would have um, is to go into it with a, um, a an organization standpoint ahead of time. Um, when we initially created those first um, 30 or so Sims, we, uh, we didn't necessarily have a naming convention um, or a labeling convention set up already. Um, and so we've sort of backtracked a little bit and gone back in and now we're really starting to label and organize sims so that we can keep track of data and keep track of what sim is in what course, if a sim is just on our site or if it is on a course or if it's living somewhere else, um, then it's easier for us to keep track of that. Gotcha. I love, like I said, love the organization tip. I think there's, if you have so many people building demos, it can get a little messy fast if there's not a standard naming convention or template. 
beyond organization, any other tips for any newbies starting out with Nevadic? Um, I would say walk through the quick start. I would say, I don't know if it's still called quick start. It is. Yeah, there was perfect. a quick start manual. Um, that was super helpful for us. So essentially everybody, we had about a week like to kind of go through and do a, a demo sim or a quick walkthrough. Extremely helpful. Um, and use the help articles because sometimes we'll be creating something and we won't realize that we have the ability to um, like add something or navigate, you know, make a particular slide on a sim, do something that we really wanted to do. So um, definitely use the help center articles, but walking through the quick start was a big thing for us. Shout out to our CS team there. Awesome. Well, this has been really interesting. This is like a use case I didn't know as well. So I love learning more about it. Thank you so much for joining us, Nikki. Absolutely. Thank you.